What makes a great pilot episode? I've been watching recent pilot episodes, and until now, none of them were striking enough for me to feature. That's when I saw Final Space, which you can view for yourself below. This is one I recommend seeing before you watch the rest of this video. Off the top of my head, I can't think of a time I've ever seen such a perfect blend of drama and humor in an American cartoon. I'm relieved, but also not surprised that a channel picked up Final Space. In fact, the only six companies that would listen to a pitch from an independent filmmaker in the first place all got into a bidding war over the rights to air this series. Yes, Final Space became a TV show, it's coming out in 2018. So what is it that sets Final Space apart from the other cartoon pilots floating around on the internet? It might be obvious if you're a connoisseur of these things, but let's try to list the major elements out, starting from the least important. This sounds self-defeating coming from an animation channel, but I've said it before and I'll say it again, art and animation is important enough to be on the list, but it's not that important. There's a standard of quality the pilot should meet, but I've seen pilots with amateur-looking art that got picked up. The art style and the animation quality is always something that can be changed after a pilot gets serialized. Usually the art improves compared to the pilot, but sometimes it's worse. Due to the way studio budgets work, a pilot with purely amazing animation as its only leg to stand on is not going to go anywhere, because funding something like that over multiple episodes is too expensive and it takes too long for the artists to make, and if the only thing going for it is amazing art, well, you know, pfft. With that said, the animation in Final Space clearly makes the cut, it fits the current cultural taste and animation look and feel, and it's something you could consistently produce in a studio at a reasonable cost. I'm guessing that while every episode of the series may not have that extra pizzazz like this 3D depth of field on the characters with focus blur, the characters and the overall art style are going to be pretty much the same, just a guess. As far as voice acting, that kind of falls in the art category too, but it really depends if the director intends the voice actors to stay the same if the series gets made, or if it's okay to cast new people. If you're going to have an all-new cast or almost all-new cast, the voice acting is not as important. The next big headline element is the concept and the world. As far as we see in the pilot for Final Space, this really isn't that original, quirky, or interesting. It's, you know, your standard science fiction world, spaceships, aliens, cool technology, strange anomalies like temporal worms. So often you'll hear that having an original concept or a new twist on an old concept is critical to a good cartoon pilot or pitch. I don't always find that to be the case. Otherwise, we wouldn't have the forever eternal popularity of high school dramas, high fantasy worlds, personified animals, all of those big overarching concepts that have been done a million times over. While it can be beneficial to have an original gimmick, it's not really necessary. Final Space doesn't have one at all. Nothing happens that screams out to me, wow, what an original idea! Sometimes you'll see an animation pilot that has a really cool concept you get excited about, but as soon as you watch it, your excitement dries up into a shriveled carcass of depression. This happens when a pilot falls short in the next two areas, starting with writing. Writing means not just the script, but the story, the pacing, and the overall tone of the pilot episode. The existence of humor in this hopeless situation is a result of good writing in Final Space. It would have been very easy to have too much humor, which kills the drama, or to have too much drama, which would change the tone of Final Space into something very dark. Weaker writing in pilot episodes has a few obvious hallmarks, one being lame jokes, and another being bad pacing. It's more common these days to see a pilot that tries to cram too much into the small time limit, hyperactive pacing, than it is to see too little sloth pacing. The thing about writing for a pilot is you have the interesting challenge of deciding where to start your story and how to do it in a way that will maximize audience interest. Remember, this is a pilot. It doesn't logically have to be episode one. It could be in the middle or the end or a prequel. To illustrate the point, imagine Final Space, same story, but instead of starting here, it starts here. Simply by doing that, you lose the hook in the beginning. Great pilot writing doesn't always need a lot of dialogue to communicate, either. An excellent example of this is the nuance of the very last line in the Final Space pilot. You save Mooncake. You save the universe. You save Quinn. 
Think about the order of that list. Quinn is more important than the universe to the main character. Didn't need to explain a single thing, just needed to write it in that order with the right voice acting to back it up. And that's the type of power you can have with just one sentence when you know what you're doing. But the first, the first, and the absolute most important thing is character development. I don't care what the quality of your pilot animation is, the voice acting, the editing, the way you cut your story together, none of that matters, none of it, if I don't care about your characters. We're human. We want to see stories about people and personalities like us, different from us. We want to see them struggle and succeed and fail. So when you begin your story at the low point, when everything has fallen apart, you grant the audience such a wide field of vision that they see all of it. The successes, the failures, the flashback on life, glimpses of the bonds between people. We want to know more. We want to see if Gary can fix this and what he's going to have to sacrifice to do it or whether he's doomed to fail. And with all of the other pilots I've watched that didn't get turned into shows, making the audience love or hate the characters in 15 minutes or less is always the failing point. Always. The animation may be amazing, the character design pleasant, the voice acting stellar, the concept unique, but in the end, are you drawn into the story? Do you need to keep watching? No. Why? Because you haven't made a human connection with anybody. It's like being stuck at a party where everyone around you is horribly boring. Now, some people will argue that a pilot episode with incredible art or a unique concept could draw people in as well, and I agree. Those elements alone work great for short films and stories that aren't meant to be episodic. But if you think about every book series, TV show, or comic that you love, it's because of the characters. Characters, writing, concept, and art are the elements of a good cartoon pilot episode. As to what makes a successful pilot, as in a pilot that results in an entire animated series getting funded, I'm not a network executive, so I don't know precisely. I could make some educated guesses. But hey, if you happen to have a personal relationship with a network executive who'd like to come on Scribble Kibble to talk about what they look for in a pilot episode or in a pitch, I'd be happy to have them. Send me an email. <laughs> You're perfect in the perfect way. You're perfect and I hope you stay. Your goofy little self eternally. Oh, I'm weird like you. I know it's true. I'm in the clouds up there with you. You think you're flawed. Wouldn't you agree? You're perfect for me.